hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel um today's scholarship we're going to talk about an opportunity um for public health um related courses um so if you want to do public health or you find yourself in the health sector you know medical student nursing um sciences that you still want to move into public health this is a great opportunity now um it's an opportunity given by one of the best institutions in canada which is the university of british columbia and um, this scholarship is not yet opened but it's got a lot of things you will need to do uh, before you can apply so if you're watching this scholarship this is just a step-to-step -step guide on how to go about it so you can start the scholarship application now if you're here for the first time um, you're welcome as usual please do subscribe and hit the notification button so that you can get more pop-ups if you've been here for us uh, with us for a while how is your scholarship application going on i hope it's going great and you are the real mvp keep keep doing what you're doing so the admission requirements is the application open for this msc in the school of population and public health in university of british columbia will be opening on the december 1st now the deadline for the recipient of all other documents scholarship application will be needed on the january of 15th now admissions will not consider your application if all your documents have not received by that date now every applicant must meet certain uh, minimum academic requirements and relevant experience um, set out by the msc program and the faculty of graduate and postdoctoral studies now it's giving both msc and phd as well so you can apply if you want to do a, a straight phd now for students who are in canada and us this is your admission requirement um but for those who are international undergraduate degrees um student now you will need um international credentials that has must have academic background that meets this minimum requirements based on the country of origin now i will take you to the particular country of origin i'm going to use um um ghana as a as a background so this is the countries of origin so any country that you can find here is eligible um, to apply so because I'm from Ghana if you follow me for a long time you know I'm from Ghana so almost every time I use Ghana as a as a, as a tool uh, but you can always ask me any question with relation to um, this admission now for UBC master's program what is requiring is that you need an honors bachelor's degree that's your undergraduate degree if you went to any university in Ghana now you need a second class or upper division or division um, one or 70 percent so those who do CWA and those who do GPA depending on what um, your grade point is uh, they need a second class and the minimum requirements you need is a bachelor, uh, bachelor's degree now for a doctoral you also need that same um a master's degree in equivalent equivalent field and a second class up sorry for that now what one thing I'm, i would advise you to do is that if you can read on the profiles of these students that are found in ghana or your country wherever you're applying from if you have a question do target your questions for them and when i came on this page i just saw my friend i should give her a very big shout out abigail amakotri one of my sisters in the scholarship application and i'm so proud of her if you want her contact to be able to um, ask her any question i can always forward a question to her if you are applying and you're kind of stuck or you have any uh, questions you want to ask her so this is the minimum requirement for ghana so now let's go back to the page um where the uh, admission requirements are so um what they need as well is that you would need um, an A or a B plus or a higher grade in an undergraduate statistics or mathematics course. Uh, the course must appear on your transcript and shouldn't be taken within past 10 years. Or you need a GRE score in a 50, uh, 50th percentile or above in both verbal and quantitative components. So if you do not have or you didn't take any statistics course or you didn't get an A or B plus in that course, you can actually um, sort to doing a GRE and having a 50% um, in the verbal and quantitative sessions and this shouldn't be taken within the fast, past five years. Now, they will need an English proficiency. So I told you that this particular opening is opening in December, all right, but you will need an English proficiency exam to also prove your um, yourself. Now, it's needing a score of 100 or higher on a TOEFL or a score of 7.0 or higher 
and a confidence score of 6.5 in each of the scores on an IELTS. Um, putting a link to how to apply for IELTS above, you can listen to what IELTS is all about and start preparing. Now, the, the test must have been taken within 24 months at the time of submission of your application, guys. So that means that this, you would, you need an IELTS before that. And I mean, it's unfortunate, but one of the things I'm not going to lose hope because I'm somebody that I believe in uh, going for what you want, irrespective of how it comes or the application. So if I've still got my IELTS now, or I'm not going to write it and I start the application somewhere in November, I'll still put the IELTS um, score in it. And it's left to the admissions board whether they think I'm a stronger candidate for which they would want to look at an IELTS within 24 months before choosing me. I'm always that aggressive when it comes to um, scholarship application. And I think that's the right spirit to go about it. Now, it's also saying that an English required test is, um, is needed for applicants with an undergraduate degree from a university where English is not the primary language of instruction. So in Ghana, there, there is, uh, English is the primary source of um, um, instructions. Um, so there is something called English proficiency letter. Whichever country you're coming from, please find out from your university if you've got an English proficiency letter because you can use this as a proof that you've had all your studies in English and you can use that application as well if your IELTS is not ready and submits that. Now the relevant um, experience requirements for all applicants is here. Now they need a detailed curriculum vitae. Now I'm putting a link I'm so, um, in the suggestion um, where you can write your CV that is going to highlight your academic research and professional experience. Um, this should include academic history, publications, conference presentations, awards, fellowship, teaching experience, workshops, volunteering work, employment. They recommend all that in your CV and they're saying that you should share it with your potential supervisor. So this particular scholarship is requiring that you have a potential supervisor, whether you're doing a master's or a PhD before your time of application, because it makes you a potential or, or like a very stronger candidate. And I'll, I'll, we'll go back to that page to talk about that. Now a letter of intent. So you need a letter of intent that describes your career objectives, your research interests, and how the MSc program will meet your career goals. Now it shouldn't be more than 700 words. And I see that you can find tips. So they've provided tips, um, on how to apply, uh, write a letter of intent here. So if you just click on here, you can, and even with the CV as well, um, you can contact the UBC student services or here to also get, a uh, a sample in applying but I'll still put all the links in the suggestion above you can have a click on it open it and whilst you finish listening you go and listen on how to write it so now they need reference letters and that's also a big thing so three reference letters are required for this application we prefer that two of your references be from your former professors but will accept professional references if you do not have academic references which is great please ask your references to highlight your academic skills research skills and your ability to excel in an academic environment this must include your potential to succeed as a graduate student academic ability and initiative, critical thinking and complex problem solving skills, ability to interpret and communicate data clearly and effectively. Now you should demonstrate compassion, professionalism and integrity. Please ask your referees to provide information on the context in which they know you for. Is it work? Is it um, NGO? Is it an educational? Or is it that you executed them in um, some roles? And so some program specific admissions supervisor support is highly, highly recommended, but not required. But I mean, if you hear something like this, guys, you shouldn't even look at the, but not required aspect, try as much as possible and contact a potential supervisor the best way you can, uh, that align with your research interest, interest and research publication. And you can contact the faculty member if you're interested in working with them and get a supervisor before, trust me, hundred percent of those who get a supervisor before the application would definitely, definitely, definitely get this particular scholarship. Now on this pane, you see a couple of things that are required. I was at the admission requirements option. So now you can just click on how to apply so that you know how to apply. Now it's clearly in boldly that is the application will open on the December 1st and the application deadline will be just within two weeks for you to, um, 
you know, a month and a couple of two weeks to um, apply for that. Now, you will need to explore your options, review the requirements, prepare your documents, apply online and check your application status when you're offered admission. And I'll be sure within that time to also do a step by step process with that with a, a model application process so in ex exploring your options you will need to know about the masters of science in public health um, course now you will need to um, consider graduate programs from other department just in case as well and you will need to explore other programs in masters of health and master of occupational and environmental hygiene as well there'll be some information sessions you you can click on these links they are all active to check on that now you will need to review the admission requirement which we spoke about intensely uh, before i started now prepare all your documents have your transcripts available go to your school chase them up and collect them now you will need to upload the cv like i spoke about um there's a um, you need to, you need to upload it in a review form um, a, a pdf form sorry um a letter of intent in a pdf form um your reference letters um now they will be sent um electronic reference references like to apply um, send your references online um, but they can also submit a reference form which you can download here and give it to them so that they do that um, and they'll be sent that electronic to fill it up later uh, papers, papers, paper letters of references or paper references mailed to the MSc program um, it should be on a, a letterhead or mailed directly sealed and endorsed in an envelope to the school now supervisor support so if you have your supervisor support they are saying it's optional but i'll say it is necessary so do get it you send this uh, form to your supervisor if he's ag agreed to um, also fill that up now the gre scores here as well must be submitted electronically through the testing agency so you require your testing agency in your school or wherever you took it to submit it to the school directly or TOEFL as well it should be submitted directly so i know that British Council within your um, within your country um, is responsible for this IELTS as well as uh, TOEFL, so you can check with them. Now, um, those who are, who need um, permanent residence of Canada should submit a photocopy. So this doesn't apply to international student. Now, in applying online, you will need to click on this apply. App. Uh, online application it says it takes 45 to 60 minutes to complete an online registration and um in, it has an international charge of 168 um dollars so check the equivalent in your country start to if you need to start saving from now to um six months start up um, saving towards that now after you're done with the application uh you will need to check your application status online um as well here and you would be notified uh, by email in February or March whether you have application, which is next year, 2022. Um, if you are a successful applicant, you receive a letter uh, by email and you will use that um, for your visa application and be sure that you get the visa. Um, I hope this was helpful as well. So in looking for a supervisor as well, let's go to that. Now it's saying that we strongly recommend that your research supervisor um you can you, you can search for a research supervisor you can search for a research supervisor using the research supervisor tool on the ubc graduate school website here and you have to use keywords to certain research interests that you want to look for a particular supervisor that pops up then now you will need that desired supervisor to fill the supervisory um inquiry form um, here, I, I showed you, you can click on it and download and send it to them. Uh, you can send, you may send them directly by email. Um, please make sure to include your degree, a short overview of your research background and a short paragraph explaining why you want to work with them. Now, additional tips for making a good impression. Do not send not specific or mass emails to everybody in the department hoping for a match. No, don't do that. Include a brief outline of your academic background, why you're interested in working with a faculty member, and what experience you could bring to the department. The supervision inquiry form guides you with targeted questions. Now, you need to highlight your achievement and why you're a top student. Faculty members receive dozens of these requests from prospective students. 
Now demonstrate that you're familiar with this research, convey the specific ways you're get and fit for the program and convey the specific ways the program lab faculty is a good fit for the research you're already in. Now take all these questions one after the other and write a line or two. Then now you put all of them together and see how it sounds or how it reads. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Now, like I said, this application is opening on December 1st and I'll be sure to come back to do a step-by-step -step process. So do stay tuned on this page, um, subscribe so you can get a step-by-step -step process released on that day and any questions that we experience in that line. Now, if you are from any different country, look in your particular country, look at the student profiles, send them an email of intent of what you are intending to do and how they could provide assistance if you need some help. Uh, thank you for watching this video.